Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi and today we're taking a look at the new Chantecai Wild Meadows collection. I purchased the entire collection, so we're gonna go through swatches, we've got demos and you know product details and so forth, and we'll also do some comparisons at the end. So let's go ahead and get started with arm swatches. So I will also have swatches of these on the eyes, the cheeks, the lips, so you can see everything and how it would look on the actual skin as well. We'll do that when we're talking about product details. But first we're gonna start with arm swatches so you can kind of get an idea of the actual shades. And we're gonna start off with the eye quartet. So first let's go ahead and take a look at the packaging here. If you're familiar with Chantecai's, you know, collections over the last few years, they do have the same kind of packaging, which something to note, this is like a plasticky material and it can get a little tacky. So if you stack your products, notice they will actually kind of stick to it which can be problematic if you are like me and you pile things up on your desk, you go to pick one up and the bottom one comes with it and then falls. So that has happened to me. I have lost an eyeshadow that way. So just something to be aware of that the material is a little tacky. So this is plastic. You can see everything here is gonna be a floral design. This eyeshadow quartet is two grams of product and it is made in Italy. So there's a two year shelf life on this. And inside we have colors, you know, it actually kind of reminds me a little bit of the Butterfly Quartet, which I did lose one of the shadows, but we'll take a look at what I have left from there. Let's start off here with the gold. And you can see this is gonna be a soft shimmery gold. And then next to it, we have a soft pink. This is going to be a cool tone pink. The gold you can see is actually going to be, you know, it, it's a pretty neutral gold. It's not too yellow. It's not too silvery. So it's definitely going to be kind of your true soft gold. This pink is, you know, it kind of looks like the perfect blush shade, doesn't it? <laughs> so, you know, you kind of have this almost like a bubblegum pink infused with a little bit of carnation pink. If you're familiar with the Crayola Crayon carnation pink, it's very similar to that. So next up, we have kind of this shimmery taupe, and I really like this shade. So um, this is my favorite shade in the quartet, actually. You can see it's just a shimmering taupe with a touch more brown than gray in it, and really beautiful, pretty neutral on the spectrum. And then we have this matte medium tone brown. And I actually really like this shade as well. Unfortunately, none of the shades in here are super dark. So that is something to note. You know, we go from something very, very light to kind of more of a deeper medium. So these are the shades in the eye quartet. And we'll talk a little bit more about these in a few minutes when we look at some eye swatches and some eye demos. Let's move on to the blushes. So we have two blushes that were released. We have Apple Blossom and Anemone, and really beautiful packaging on both. Again, same material as the Eye Quartet. We have four grams of product in each of these. They're also made in Italy. You can see you've got this floral embossing. It's gonna be the same on both. And these have an 18 month shelf life. So let's go ahead and take a look at the, well, let's put it this way. This is Apple Blossom, and then right next to it, we're just gonna kind of buff that out a little bit as though you were buffing it into your skin. So you can kind of see what that would look like sheared out a little. So this one here's Apple Blossom. So you can see that Apple Blossom, it has a little bit of, um, you know, it's a, a soft light pink, but if you look at the undertones, you have a little bit of kind of like a neon, shade in there a little bit more of that like neon luminescence and this is going to be a little bit more of a warmer pink whereas anemone here is going to be slightly cooler in tone you can see it looks a little bit plummier a little bit darker i have to say these do swatch pretty closely though i mean they don't look that different you can see anemone is going to be a little bit deeper a little plummier a little cooler but not it's not a huge difference i actually did think that these were going to be a bit more of a drastic difference than they truly are so you can see when you buff them out 
you can definitely tell the difference between anemone and apple blossom, but they're still closer than I expected them to be. Next, we have three of the lip cheeks. And to say, I really love the packaging on these. This one here is Meadow. And when I first saw these online, I wasn't sure if each of these panels was kind of like a sticker applied, which would have really made me mad for the cost of these. These do retail for 52 US dollars. So we've got the C at the top for Chantecaille, we've got the magnetic closure, and the lip cheeks, they're kind of like the lipstick, lip balm, lip gloss kind of hybrid product. So they're gonna be a little bit shinier. And these are actually all, like it's all one piece. This is like not a, a panel that is attached in any way. It is all one, one actual piece. So here's Meta. We're gonna put these on my hand here and just gonna kind of build it up just a little bit down here. That way we can leave room for comparisons. You can see this is gonna be a bit more of a peachy apricot kind of shade here. So this is gonna be the warmest of the three shades. And then next up, we have Crocus. This is the one that I'm wearing on my lips. I love the color of this. <laughs> uh, purple is my favorite color. And I think this case in particular is really very gorgeous. This is gonna be more of your, you know, neutral medium pink. And look at that, really beautiful color. And it really fits well with the blushes. It's kind of in between these two shades with the blushes. So here, let's go ahead and put a little dab right here by the pink eyeshadow and in between these two blushes. So you can kind of see how those kind of go together. And our last one here is Carpathia. Another stunning design here. And this is going to be the deepest of the three. And you can see here, it's not going to be significantly deeper than Crocus. They're pretty close, but this one has a little bit more red in it. So it's, it's going to be, you know, if this is going to be your cool, this will be your warm. This is more of your neutral, but it still leans a little bit warm. And you can see it's kind of more so like a soft red mixed with a bit of a salmon pink. It's a really beautiful shade though. I do like this one a lot. And by the way, the lip cheeks, we have two and a half grams of product. They are made in Italy as well, and they have an 18 month shelf life. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about these products in depth while we look at some demos. So we're gonna look at eye swatches for the eyeshadows, cheek swatches for the blushes, lip swatches for the lipsticks and so forth. And we're gonna also look at a few demos of these as well. And let's start off with the eye quartet. This year, Shantakai is celebrating their 25th anniversary. So I believe they're gonna have quite a few, you know, special collections and things like that coming up throughout the year, kind of in celebration. This is their first big way that they are celebrating their anniversary with this particular collection. Now, if you're familiar with Shantakai, Shantakai is a brand that really promotes philanthropy. So they often have a philanthropic collection or perhaps just certain items that, you know, the proceeds will go to benefit a particular foundation. Typically, their collections are based around like a particular animal or species, and then proceeds will go to help protect that species. Now, this time in this collection, it's the eye quartet where we are donating some proceeds. So the blushes and the lip cheeks are not philanthropic. The eye quartet is. So the eye quartet retails for 78 US dollars. Again, you have two grams of product. It's made in Italy and we have a two year shelf life on this. And out of that 78 US dollars, $2.34 of the purchase price will be donated to the Villa Abatis Cultural Association. And this is basically a foundation to protect the biodiversity of Romania's Carpathian Mountains. So that's what your proceeds, a portion of your proceeds are going to help protect. Now, according to Shantakai, they say this elegant eye quad includes two cream infused pearlescent shimmering shades, one satiny soft matte shade, and one luminous satin hue. 
The color story creates beautiful looks when mixed and matched or when worn as individually solo shades. So as you can see from the eye swatches, you know, I have either applied them with the Sonia G Soft Shader, which is an undyed goat hair brush, or with my finger. So you can see kind of the difference between both of them, particularly with the two lighter shades. You're gonna see a big difference with a finger application versus a brush application. So that is just something to know if you're trying to get more color, definitely go with a finger or foam tip applicator. Now with these, I have to say, the shimmering shades, it's obvious which two are shimmering. We have the gold and the taupe. They definitely have a bit of that pearlescent, more like micro glitter, like very, very finely micro little glitter look. And um, yeah, so those are obvious. Now between the pink and the brown, you know, one is a satin, one is a matte, but honestly, they look very similar in finish. Neither of them looks like a true satin they both look more like a matte shadow. And I would have to say you can see a little bit of extra luminosity with the pink, so my guess is that is the satin, but it's definitely not as luminous as a true satin in my opinion, and texturally when you touch it, it really feels more like a powdery matte. So just something to note there, um, that it really does feel more like two shimmering shades and two matte shades. Overall, I have to say I do like the quartet, but I was really drawn into it more so from the packaging. My favorite shades in here are actually going to be the two neutral shades. I think the gold is a really pretty gold and I like how it performs with these. However, you know, I don't think there's anything unique about it. And I would have to say, um, you know, soft pink eyeshadows are not typically my thing. I purchased this quad knowing that anyway, so that's on me, but I just don't love the texture of it. I wish it had been just a little bit creamier and more of a satin finish than it actually is. So regardless of the color, I just feel like that particular shadow, I wouldn't say it's dry, but it's drier than what I was hoping for. And I feel like a color like that um, just needs a little bit more luminosity than what I'm getting from that. The taupe, I really like this taupe. I think it is a gorgeous taupe. I typically go for taupes that have a little bit more of a silver glint to them. And this one has a little bit more of a soft gold glint to it. So it pairs really nicely with the gold shade in this quartet. And I have to say this matte brown, I really like this one because, you know, it's actually, I thought it might be a little too deep for me to do as a one and done but it blends out very nicely. You can actually shear this out pretty easily and you can get a really nice one and done. You can get a gradient with this. So I really do like that particular shade. So again, my top two shades are gonna be the two brown shades uh, compared to the gold and the pink, which I just don't find that unique or special. Overall, if you're purchasing this quad, you know, I think it's a very nice quad. We are seeing some color stories that are similar to this coming up soon, such as the Chanel Spring Quad. And really, for me, this was more about the packaging because I love floral packaging. So yeah, um, you'll have to kind of think about what is worth it to you and what isn't. But I did want to make sure that you understand that but I did want to make sure that you are aware that $2.34 of your $78 purchase price is what will be donated. All right, let's move on to the blushes. And I have to say, I was at first a little disappointed with the blushes for two reasons. Now, first of all, when you looked at the arm swatches, you could see they are fairly similar in color. Yes, they are different, but there's not a drastic difference. And the online photos made it look like there was a bigger difference than, than there really is in real life. So that, that was my first disappointment. The second one was actually my fault. So I thought these were the, that gel powder formula that they've had on some of their limited edition blushes recently, such as the one for holiday 2021, I believe it was, with the pearls on top. And I love that formula, and it was around this price as well. These blushes retail for 75 US dollars. This is actually just a powder blush, so it does not have that gel powder texture. 
It is described as a lightweight, airy powder blush that gives the cheeks a pop of vibrant color. So that was kind of on me there. I thought it was a different formula than it is. It is a nice powder blush, but it isn't anything spectacular or unique. So it is just more of a traditional powder blush. Really, for me, the best thing about it is the packaging. So I think the packaging is gorgeous. In particular, the anemone packaging is my favorite. As I mentioned, the purple is my favorite color. So I, and I love anemones. So I just think they're really, really beautiful flower. So as you can see in these swatches, I did a side by side of both apple blossom and anemone one on each cheek and I have two Sonyuji cheek pro blushes or cheek pro brushes so I use one of each so there's no contamination there with the brush they both have a clean brush for each application you can see one layer versus two layers so you can see on the skin apple blossom is definitely going to be lighter a little bit more of a softer pink. You can see a little bit of a pearlescent luminosity when you buff both of these in there, but I do feel like because of the lightness and shade, it's a little more evident with the apple blossom than it is with the anemone. Now in the demos, um, I actually, you know, for the wear test, I wore the apple blossom all day. You could see how, I'll show you the wear test in a few minutes, but you can see how that actually does you know, stick around. These performed well throughout the day. Actually, I was with a friend all day and she was kind of like really impressed with how well it stayed on me and uh, compared to, you know, how, you know, how things typically perform. So overall, the same, same power was good. There wasn't anything spectacular or unique about it though. So with the demos I used with the Apple Blossom, the Sonia G Classic Cheek, which is an undyed goat hairbrush will pick up the product a little bit more firmly. With the anemone demo, demo I used the Kairado Kiwami uh, cheek brush, which is actually gonna be a soft squirrel br uh, brush. And so it doesn't pick up product quite as strongly. So just something to note there with the difference between those. Overall, I think the blushes are both nice. I do think that they are pretty close in color though, and um, it's not really necessary to have both of these. Uh, you know, I just don't think they're different enough for both of them. Which one do I prefer? Honestly, it's kind of a toss up. <laughs> they're, they're both close enough that I would have to say I like them equally. And formula wise, I think the formula itself is just okay. It's an average formula. I don't see anything outstanding about this formula. For me, you know, this again is something that's more about the packaging. And moving on to the lip shakes. When people talk about Chantecai, one of the first things that typically comes to mind are the lip shakes. It's probably the most popular product from Chantecai, at least in their makeup line. And they are kind of a, lipstick, lip gloss, lip balm kind of hybrid. It's got more of the shininess of a gloss, but it has more of a lipstick lip balm kind of texture on the lips. According to Chantecai, it's a smoothing, hydrating lipstick infused with hyaluronic acid for lips that look brilliantly glossy and plumped. Now, one thing to note about these, they don't have any animal testing, they're gluten-free, they're vegan. They retail for 52 US dollars. You get two grams of, two and a half grams of product and an 18 month shelf life. Packaging on these is really beautiful. I have to say, I really like them. And um, one other thing I'd like to know is lip shakes do have a vanilla fragrance added to them. So if you don't like vanilla scented lip products, which to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of the fragrance in these, but I couldn't resist these. <laughs> yeah, so I had to pick these up. But they also have another product in their line called Lip Veils, which are could be a slightly thinner formula, more of a thin, um, balmy pigment essentially for your lips and those are fragrance free so they just don't come in this beautiful packaging so uh, just if you are looking for something fragrance free you might want to check that those out as well now as for the different lip shakes you can see with one layer applied versus several layers applied with one layer you get kind of this nice soft pigmented look really easy to apply gives you just a hint of color on the lips it's comfortable 
And if you wanna really build that up, it definitely becomes a bit more of a glossier, shinier look. When I have it built up, I do prefer to use a lip liner or lip pencil around the edges just to give it a little bit more crisp, crispness but I have not experienced any feathering or bleeding with this formula if I don't use it. I just, you know, it's just a personal preference there. So overall, the lip cheeks, again, they're a classic formula. I think they are really nicely done. And the colors in here are, you know, they are nice colors and they did try to accommodate everybody by having something a little bit warmer, something a little bit cooler, and something a little bit neutral. My personal favorites are actually going to be Carpathia and crocus. I like the meadow, but I just don't tend to wear the peachy lip shades quite as much as the cooler tones, like the pinks and the mauves and even reds. And I have to say, you know, I really like them. Carpathia though has kind of stolen my heart. So that's probably my number one choice, but the, the case for crocus. So again, I, in the wear test, which I'm gonna go ahead and show you that now, this was, you know, the wear test from the first eye demo that I showed you and the Apple Blossom Blush and Carpathia Lip Chic. So I had that on and I wore it all day. Around the four hour mark, I topped off the lip chic with just a bit of clear lip balm and then I didn't reapply anything the rest of the day. So when you see the actual update here at 10 hours, that's what's left of the lip pigment. So it's pretty much all gone, but you can see a very faint hint of color that's left. But you know, that's 10 hours after applying it. And again, just clear lip balm at the four hour mark, nothing else. So overall, you know, that's pretty decent for this type of lip product. But again, you're not really gonna see any color. You would wanna reapply this, I would say probably around the four, probably around the four hour mark is where I would typically reapply the color. But I did still have color left until maybe around six hours or so when it was significantly faded. So we're gonna start off by swatching this quartet again on this arm here so we can kind of look at a few comparisons and I'm gonna put this one vertically and we'll put the other items horizontally. So that way it's easy to see which one this is. Look at that tote, I love that tote. All right, so here's the quartet. So this is one of the Pat McGrath quartets or quads. I'm not sure what it's called because it does not have a name on the package. So I will try to put that on the screen if I can find it. But this color story, you know, it really, I mean, look how similar they are. It really made me think of the, um, Chantikai. So let's go ahead. We'll start with that. This will be more intense. And let's just, there's the gold. I mean, you can see straight off the bat that this gold is gonna be, uh, you know, deeper. We've got that pink with, oh, look at that pink with the gold. I forgot how much I like that shade. Um, then we also have kind of this mauve purple shade here, kind of like a deeper rose, and this brown here. So again, we do have a similar color story, just a little bit less intense than the Butterfly Quartet. I mean, than the Wild Meadows, but let's take a look at the Butterfly Quartet from Chantagai. So I did lose that shade. So that one, you know, did break on me, but here we're not gonna see similarities with all of the shades, obviously, um, but let's go ahead and see what we have. Okay, so these are the three. Let's go ahead and we'll just swatch them right here. So this is actually a duochrome. You can see that this deepest shade here is gonna be a lot cooler in tone than what we have in Wild Meadows. And then this first like taupey shade here is gonna be a bit deeper. And yeah, it's actually a little bit cooler as well. But the depth of this taupe is more like the depth in the Wild Meadows deepest shade. So just something to note there that those are going to be different if you already have that one. Now, when Shantakai first started with this type of packaging, um, the first quads they released were the butterfly. So we've got the cool quartet with the cool hummingbird. And we're just gonna take a look at this, you know, kind of taupe shade here. 
This is gorgeous. I'm gonna go ahead and put that right here. And then let's go ahead and take the taupe from, this is from the Wild Meadows. We'll put that right here in the middle so you can see the difference. And then we also have this warm quartet. And in that case, we're gonna take a look at this matte brown and see how that compares right here to the Wild Meadows. You can see it's slightly warmer, but those are gonna be similar in color. So if you still have that one, it's similar. It's just gonna have a little bit more red in the butterfly, I mean, in the Hummingbird warm quartet than the Wild Meadows. And then the giraffe quartet, we're gonna take a look at this matte brown here as well. Put that one right here, so that's giraffe. And again, it's close. It's kind of in between warm hummingbird and wild meadows. So it's just slightly cooler than warm hummingbird, but a little bit warmer than wild meadows. So that's gonna be kind of it for the comparisons with the pink and the gold, but I do wanna take a look at that taupe. So this is the YSL Satin Crush in 28, one of the best taupes on the market. We're gonna go ahead and put that one right here. You can see how much more silvery and gray that is compared to the Chantecaille taupe. This is Dior Beige Mitza, and this is in the single. And we're gonna take a look at that, and you can see that that color is very, very close. Very similar here between the two of them. I would say that the Shantakai has just a little bit more pink in it versus the Beige Mitza, which it is perhaps just slightly more golden, but they are very, very close. And when I say slight, I mean very, very slight. You know, this would be the closest dupe to the taupe in the Chantecai Quartet. And then our last taupe comparison, this is going to be the bottom left-hand shade in Tom Ford's Nude Dip. And let's just put that one right here. You can see it's also another close shade. It's slightly cooler in tone than the Chantecaille. All right, so for blush comparisons, I wanted to start off with this Chantecaille Rouge Pearl uh, blush that came out for holiday in 2021. This is the shade Aquaya, and this is the formula that I thought it was. It's a really silky, kind of like a gel powder kind of texture. We're gonna put this right here, kind of in between. You can see how you get kind of this soft luminescence, and it goes on more sheer. You can see this has a little bit more purple in it than either of the current shades. So I have to say though, I do actually, I prefer this formula over the powder that we have in these. Now, first off, I wanna compare some Pat McGrath blushes. So, so first off, Pat McGrath in Cherish, I thought looked very similar to this shade here, but you can see that Apple Blossom is gonna be warmer this is going to be a little bit lighter than Anemone, but it has a bit more of that hue to it. And then I wanted to take a look at Lovestruck, which reminded me of Anemone. And let's see how that one compares. You can see that Lovestruck has a little bit more purple in there, but the depth of color is pretty similar. But again, this one's gonna be a little bit cooler. I have to say though, they're still you know, relatively close. Now, another one that Apple Blossom made me think of here is the Sisley Lafito Blush in number one, Pink Peony. And I'm gonna swatch this down here. We're gonna swatch Apple Blossom right next to it. So here's Apple Blossom. And you can see Apple Blossom is going to be warmer. And then I wanted to compare this with one of the Chantecaille Philanthropy Cheek Shades as well. This is the shade Joy Wild Horse. This is not going to be a dupe, but I did wanna kinda share that. It's gonna be a bit cooler in tone, definitely not as warm. Formula-wise though, I would have to say they feel similar. Um, I think the powder formula is slightly different than the powder formula in the philanthropy. I just feel like this gets a little bit more sheer. Perhaps it's a little bit more powdery, um, but you know, they are gonna be pretty similar. And yeah, just something to note. So these are actually two and a half grams. 
So we got two and a half grams versus the two grams in these. So just something to note there, these are less expensive. Another blush it made me think of is the Patrick Ta She's That Girl. So we're gonna put that right next to Apple Blossom there and you can see this is gonna be a little bit lighter and they are fairly similar. This just has, it's a little bit lighter and perhaps just a little bit less of that like neon undertone that you get. So I do think they're fairly close though. All right, we're gonna move on to a few more. So I'm gonna re-swatch Apple Blossom here. So here's Apple Blossom and let's re-swatch Anemone right below that here. And we just have a few more comparisons. So Apple Blossom and Anemone. And this is the Gucci blush in 01 Silky Rose. And let's go ahead and put that right here. You can see it's gonna be lighter. And the tone is just a little bit more nude than the Chantecai shades. And then we also have three Radiant Pink. This is gonna be a bit um, peachier. So it doesn't quite match with either of these. It's got a little more peach and actually a little bit more red in there. And then the last two I wanted to take a look at are going to be these loose powder blushes from Givenchy. So if, you're, if you are in the US and you haven't been able to get these, they are not available in the US, but you can purchase them from Feel Unique. So this is shade number one, Mousseline Lilas. This is gonna be a lot cooler and brighter than either of the Chantecai shades. I have to say I really love these uh, Givenchy blushes because they're just so easy to blend out. The next one we're taking a look at is number two, Tafeta's Rose. And this one here is going to be a bit warmer. And let's go ahead and put that right next to Apple Blossom, just so that that is the closest, but this will be lighter than Apple Blossom. So here it is. So that's it for the blush comparisons. In my now, in my opinion, the closest would actually be the two Pat McGrath. They're not dupes, they're not gonna be exactly the same, but we do have Pat McGrath and Cherish is fairly similar to Apple Blossom and Love Struck to Anemone. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at some comparisons of some of the Chantecai lip cheeks. This one here is the shade Clover that came out in a previous one and I just wanted to show you how this compares. This is actually more of a tea rose than any of these but I just wanted to show you um, that one. This is one of my favorites. We have Peach Blossom. Let's go ahead and put that one right there next to Meadow. And you can see that this has a bit more peach in it and Meadow is gonna be a little bit lighter. It has a little bit more apricot in there. There's a bit more of that like soft orange tone. This is a lip veil in Pink Lotus. And let's just put that one right there. That's gonna be more vibrant. You can see that this formula, it's really just kind of like that thin layer of pigment with a little bit of gloss. It's not gonna be as thick on your lips, but you're really gonna get a lot of pigment. And then this is the shade Willow. Let's put that one right here next to Crocus. And you can see this is gonna be a little bit cooler in tone. Uh, but they are very, very close to each other. This just has like a little bit more mauve in it, whereas Crocus is a, gonna be a bit brighter of a pink. And this is one of the uh, classic lip shakes, and I believe these are going to be going away. So if you're interested in any of the them in the traditional uh, gunmetal round packaging, this is a shade Bourbon Rose. And I do feel like these older ones had a li little bit less pigment. Um, but let's go ahead and put that one right here. You can see it's got like a lot of gloss, but you really have to build that one up. And this is gonna be a bit, it's a little bit cooler, a little bit more like of a dusty, rosy, mauve kind of shade than any of these. And then I wanted to take a look at a few of the Sisley Fido Lip Shines. So this formula is very, very similar to the Chantecai Lip Chic formula. This one here is 22 Sheer Raspberry. Let's just start moving down here. And you can see this is gonna be very pigmented. It's more of a true raspberry. I was thinking that was gonna be a little more similar than it is. This one here is 30 Sheer Coral. 
I'm gonna go ahead and put that right there next to the meadow shade. And you can see this is more of a true coral. You've got a little bit more of that pink mixed in there and the meadow is definitely more apricot. Here is 11 Sheer Blossom, one of my favorites. But again, this is gonna be a bit more of a medium rose. And then 41 Sheer Red Love. This is gonna be a bit more vibrant as well. And then the last one I want to take a look at, this is a Chantecai lip shake from the fall collection in Passiflora. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this right here so you can kind of see how that compares. It's gonna be cloak it, closest to crocus uh, but you can see that this is going to be a bit more of a dustier kind of shade it has a little bit more mauve in there this is one of my favorite shades actually from them i just love that for like an everyday look so i hope everything here was helpful i'd love to know what your thoughts are on this collection whether you picked anything up right now the collection is exclusive to the Shantakai website but it will be available in other retailers I believe February 1st, that's the date that I'm currently hearing. And Nima Marcus does have it available for pre-order right now, but you'll see it at other retailers as well. And again, you know, this is Shantakai's 25th anniversary year. So stay tuned for plenty more to come from them. And uh, yeah, overall, I'd have to say my thoughts on this collection, I would have to say the overarching theme for me is the packaging is gorgeous. I love the floral packaging. I think it's really beautiful. Um, but the products themselves, I would have to say are middling. <laughs> so they're, they're okay. I like them. They're nice products, but they do have very, very high price tags without having any really unique, you know, qualities about them, like colors or textures or anything. So for me, yeah, I think the packaging is the win here and the products themselves, they are fine. There is nothing wrong with them. Everything performed well. They're just not that special in my opinion. So I hope this was helpful and I'd love to know your thoughts down below. And if you are new here, please consider subscribing. I'll see you guys very soon and have a wonderful day.